right, we're back and we're going to put the bottoms on our muffin cups. So I have attached all six, as you can see. We used the three inch to cut these out, these bottoms, right? Which were the holes, that's how we made the holes in the tray. Now we're going to need to fit these on here. So they're going to be a little too big. So you're going to take your two and a half inch cookie cutter, two and a half inches, and you are going to cut all of your bottoms to that size. Two and a half inches should fit. Test these a little bit, yeah. Let's see. All right, well, I'm cutting them, and they're going to be a little bit smaller than what we need, but that's how things go. We can adjust, and the way that we adjust is show you. So I'm just going to cut all these guys out first. And by the way, when you attach your bottoms, these bottoms should be fairly dry. If they're not fairly dry, like a dry leather hard, they'll sag. So be really careful. Make sure you let them dry out a little bit. And we're just gonna, and we're just going to start. I'm going to go for it. Okay, so I'm going to start in the middle. I think it's easier to reach when you do your middles first. And we will have to do some adjusting, so just know that they're not gonna fit perfectly at first, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, do a little slip and score. And begin the attaching. So for sure, as you can see, it's a little bit bigger. Come in here. See, this is a little bit bigger. The, the bottom is a little smaller. So we're just going to have to come in and start pushing it in a little bit. I'm going to come get this off for a second. There we go. And you just start pushing it in until it meets the edge of the bottom. It's going to give it a really nice little taper. Just make sure that you don't push, oops, sorry, you got them off camera here. Make sure you don't push on this part because you'll make it sag. So what I'm doing is I'm coming around the edge and I'm pushing the cup in and then pushing the bottom onto it. There we go. Next one. wet my serrated rib so I get that slip and again I know I've said this already but if you don't want to deal with wetting the serrated rib you can just score and then add the slip with a paintbrush okay there's the next one and I'm gonna go ahead this one I'm just gonna start tapering a little bit first Attach. Make sure you don't mess with the center. Don't mess with the center or it will collapse on you. This is also why you want to wait until your bottoms are on the dry side of leather hard so that you can put a little pressure on it and not collapse it. This one got a little collapsed but I can push it out from the other side. You really want to scooch that wall in. All right.
you score, you should score significantly, especially when I push this in a little bit first. Especially when your clay is on the drier side, you really want to make sure it's attached well. Boop. And again, I'm only pushing down on the, down on the edge bottom so that it's connecting to the rim of the cup. And I'm not collapsing the center. Seeing the center. There we go. This will give it a nice shape. Okay, like that. Three more to go. I'm going to go ahead and score all of them. So I can go a little faster here. But you know, you guys take your time. Make sure that you're securing everything. Oop, scratched my bottom here. Puckering it in a little bit. Pucker it in, pucker it in. You, you want it to be round, but it's got to meet that bottom, so. All right. We're almost there. I'm excited to flip it over and see what's going on. Pushing in and tapping that edge so it connects. Pushing in. And then running your finger along the seam. Look how cute that is. Super cute. This is like the happiest muffin tray ever. Make sure your seams Connected well, connected well. You can brush on it. Just make sure that that's really secured. Ooh. Couple more. You don't want to score too far in. Okay, pucker it in. Pucker, pucker, pucker. This is very, like it's holding itself up really nicely because again, this is on the dry side of leather hard. Um, I've been working on it for, I don't know, a couple of hours, but broken up because I had a teach in between. So the clay, although I did cover it, it did get a chance to set up. So make sure you don't brush this part. This part, you for sure want your bottoms to be, again, on the dry side of leather hard. So one more. Look at the design on that. I'm so stoked on this right now. The texture is making me very happy. Texture goes hand in hand with ceramics. Okay, so we're puckering, 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 bringing it in, bringing it in. Just rounding it in a little bit. This banding wheel is really working for me for this project. And coming around. Sure. That is well connected. And then smooth. You can do this with your finger. You can do it with the rib. Um, be, just be careful not to take too much of your texture off. You will have this sort of smooth line at the bottom where you have connected and smoothed. But I think that looks kind of cool. So, all right ready for the moment of truth. 
realistically, this at this point should get covered and left alone for the next block. Okay, just covered. But like I said, mine are pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the chance. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and flip them just so you guys can see. And then we're going to have to do a little cleanup on the inside. Just want to make sure that this is well secured before I flip it over. All right. Okay, here we go. The moment of truth. Board on top. Flip it. Take that off carefully. Nice. Check that out. Check that out. That is awesome. All right, next step is cleanup and then we are done. 